Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part two of my Totalist Combined Syndicates of America campaign here in Hearts of Iron Fork, Kaiserreich. So, I, we're going to be getting into the Civil War today. I, I do promise to do that. However, this is probably going to be my last American campaign for a very, very long time. I re really, I can't imagine any time for what I would do another one for. So before I do that, I wanted to talk about a certain leader of the United States who... I think it's completely overlooked when we're talking about Kaiserreich. It never, we, we, of course, it's not Huey Long, it's not MacArthur, it's certainly not Jack Reed, it's certainly not even Frank Merriman, even though he can never decide what political party he is. Uh, I want to talk about Herbert Hoover here for a second, and, and, and you know, I just want, for a second, I mean really a few minutes. I think Herbert Hoover gets a really bum rap. We only really know him mostly for his work as a president of the United States, but uh, I wanted to talk about him as a man for a little bit <clears throat> so that we can sort of understand who he was. Of course, I may be talking about original timeline stuff. Go read the wiki if you want to learn about him in the Kaiserreich world. But Herbert Hoover was born in Iowa in the 1870s, 1874 to be exact, although he was later raised in Oregon because he had been orphaned when he was only 10 years old. And uh, when he was 14, he got his first job working for his uncle, who had been raising him as an office boy. Now, Herbert Hoover was part of the inaugural Stanford University class, which is, of course, a very prestigious university these days. And he studied to become a mining engineer before he got his degree in geology. Once he had done that, he worked around the world for a lot of different companies, uh, mostly one based out of London, but he, he worked in London and Australia and California and in China uh, starting in 1899. Now, some of you may know 1899. Well, what happened in 1900 in China, that would be the Boxer Rebellion. By this point, he had already gotten married to his college sweetheart, uh, Lou. And uh, this is a picture of her near, uh, you know, she's posing near an artillery piece during the rebellion uh, while they were in Tianjin, China. And uh, they actually did come under fire. Hoover was helping direct the building of barricades. Uh, meanwhile, Lou was actually working on the, in the hospital nearby. So uh, that must have been one hell of a thing to be witness to. So uh, a, a few years later, after these events, he retires, and so now, this is going to sound a little weird, but I want to talk about this book. This is De Re Metallica. This was a book that was written in 1556. It covers a lot of different subjects, chemistry that was state-of-the-art at the time, how to mine, how to refine metals, how to smelt metals, what to look for when you're looking for metal veins, and on and on and on. It was a complete standard in this sort of work for centuries. And it was in Latin, so educated people at the time could read it. But, you know, it's the, it's the 20th century. People don't, not as many people really speak Latin. And so this book was then translated into English by none other than Her Herbert Hoover and his wife. So eventually World War I is going to break out. And at the time, Hoover was living in London, but he ends up being hired by the... Um, the, the American Consul General. This is a picture of what he would have looked like then. So this is really the picture that we usually see when we think of Hoover. He's a little bit, he would have been a little bit older than what we see in Kaiserreich, I think. Uh, and so he ends up evacuating about 120,000 Americans out of Europe as World War One is breaking out. Of course, a couple years later, America is going to enter the war. I should say a couple years, a few years later, they enter the war. And then he gets hired by Woodrow Wilson, a Democratic president, to head the Food Administration. And so he's tasked with feeding the Europeans, particularly the Belgians. Uh, and after peace comes, he continues to organize food shipments to Europe, uh, which had basically been slowly starving during the years of war. Even the Soviet Union received food under him. He insisted on it. Uh, and some people said, well, you're a Bolshevik sympathizer for trying to get food over to the Soviet Union. And he says, look, whatever their f politics are, they're starving. There's 20 million starving people there, and they must be fed. And at one point, he was feeding, not him personally, he didn't have like a spoon and was putting in people's mouths, but he was responsible for a governmental organization that was feeding 10 million Soviets a day. Uh, so more time goes by, and uh, then he eventually gets appointed to be uh, the Secretary of Commerce under Coolidge and Harding. Uh, and then, of course, he 
this he this will eventually lead towards him being a launching pla pad for his uh, presidential career. Uh, probably the biggest thing that he did was during this time, during the early 1920s, was in 1927, he helped coordinate the Mississippi flood relief effort in 1927. Uh, and then he'll get nominated uh, to be the Republican candidate for president in 1928. And of course, I'm not going to talk about his presidency because I'm sure plenty of people already know about his presidency, so I don't need to. But I will say that even though he was knocked out of office in the 1932 election, he later would serve on commissions and he was appointed by Harry Truman, another Democratic president, and by President Eisenhower. So he had people from both parties appoint him to things over the years before he finally dies in the 1960s. He was, uh, I think he had, was it on his birthday? I think I think he was 90, though, when he died. This is a, his official presidential portrait. So I just wanted to talk about Hoover for a bit because nobody really talks about him. Now you know what we're uh, going to overthrow. Anyway, let's get to the Civil War. Uh, I hope you all did not mind that little digression. But, you know, the more you know. So we're gonna slow things down significantly here. Let's see if we can, you know, we're not gonna be able to get over here to Dover, I think. We might need to just let them through, but I'm gonna try to advance south as quickly as we can. Canada has seized New England as the CSA, expanded through New York and into the Northeast. Canada seized New England. The forces of the CSA are not in a position to deal with the well-organized Imperial forces, but some still demand war. War with the Imperial oppressors or deal with them later. Damn, that's a tough one. We're going to do this now. We're going hard. We're going super hard. Uh, all right, so wait. Who's my... Yeah, Canadian Front. Go, 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 go. Now the entire Entente is going to be knocking on our doors here soon. We just got to get over to Toronto. And you don't... Know, this is fine because what we're just going to do with the New England forces is... Bring them over like that. And make that our new front line. Go. So volunteers now are coming in from the Union of Britain since we are fighting their former monarchical rulers. It looks like the United States is abandoning a lot of these areas here, which is good for me. What we're going to do with Eddie... Where's Eddie? Yeah, Eddie and the Tankies, we're going to bring him over here and get him driving up to Quebec as quickly as possible. All right, lots of stuff going on here. Let's close up this little area here. Chilean volunteers have arrived. Our comrades in Chile have sent volunteers to assist us in our endeavor to bring revolution to the United States. More manpower as well as infantry equipment. Not a division, though. Okay, whatever. Maybe that's just the gameplay thing. That's how they have to kind of translate how it works. But let's try to get down here to Raleigh. Okay, more volunteers coming in and an air force as well from the Commune of France. What do we got here? We got some tactical bombers. Let's split them. Set them to close air support. And sort of spread it out. Okay, also I think I have two purple ones here. Let's change this. Let's turn you red. Something like that. And we're going to aggressively execute these battle plans. Okay, go, 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 man. Go. Why you see? Why are you doing? What are you doing here? Rush Ottawa. Rush it now. Quickly, 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 quickly. We must move. See, I think this is going to be a good thing in the end because it's going to help us take care of Canada in a rather swift manner. I think actually three speed would not be the worst thing in the world. Let's bring you down here. George Cannon, how's it going for you? All right, we need to deal with this pocket of American Union resistance. We're gonna cut off this one Canadian guy here. They've taken Buffalo. Actually, no, they have not taken Buffalo. That was part of uh, New York State. Panama's getting called in. So we should have some excess infantry equipment, right? Okay, we need to build quickly some additional infantry divisions so we can cover our forts. We're going to send these guys out early. The earlier the better. We're n I'm not so concerned with uh, trying to make a rush for Washington right now. Al Canada has seized Alaska. Damn Canadians. Well, we're already at war with them, so it's not a big deal. Now, I think Canada is going to be a higher priority for us. 
Carter, did he lose his... Okay, that was weird. Okay, Carter, we need you to be moving north quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. Doesn't th I don't think they're going to move that one division from there. So what we're going to start doing is stretch this out a little more. Move you over here and turn you into a lighter color. Hey, I really need to get some supply points going. Union of Britain has sent us equipment, though. Thank you very much. Dankeschön. Da, 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 Dankeschön. All right, come on. Get you up to Montreal. Get you up to Quebec. Toronto is ours. And why aren't you guys moving? What are you doing? Get up to Ottawa and Montreal. Let's go. I don't know what the heck you're waiting for. Here we go. Okay, how's it going here? We got a little encirclement, always nice. Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to get into St. Louis. I probably could have gotten, I think I just actually forgot to pay attention to that front. Uh, but let's try to see if we can get over the river here. This is a really nice intersection here south of Illinois. Would really love to get my hands on it. Wait a minute. Move you over like that. Okay. Got some more military factories in our hands. Very good. What are we short on? We're going to need more motorized, but I think we're kind of okay. Although we need to trade for rubber and aluminum. Okay. There we go. Oh, wait, I think I'm trading with Portugal, and they're about to... <laughs> they're, they're not going to want me hanging out pretty soon. All right, but lots of infantry equipment. Lots and lots of it. Let's see, these National Guardsmen already look ready to go. They're cheap units, but that's all they need to be. We just need to be ready for potential naval invasions by the Entente. All right. That should do it. Yeah, I feel, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Whoa, okay, a few things going on here. Central Committee Directive Number 53, appointing a leader of the Revolutionary Army. The Central Committee has re released a directive to appoint a member to the head of the Revolutionary Army and guide the Army to victory. The Central Committee has decided to appoint who? Uh, we also have what we got here, war syndicalism. Uh, as the war state... Wait, hold on a sec. Um... All right, as the war stalemates and perhaps even and perhaps may even turn against us, the Central Committee is debating a comprehensive economic reform proposal known as war syndicalism. Some of its uh, wait a minute. some of its proposals, such as state control of all foreign trade, nationalization of all factories, strict labor discipline, are not especially controversial, but it also includes potentially problematic measures such as the outlawing of strikes, obligatory labor duty for those not working or in the military strict, not working or in the military. Okay, 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 basically, what do we want to do here? We can do war syndicalism, which is a bit more totalist in spirit in some ways, or we can say we won't betray our values. So if we do the war syndicalism, this will increase our factory output, lower our supply cons cons consumption, increase resource gain and stuff. Uh, outlawing the strikes would betray the values of the revolution and make the current government no better than its capitalist enemies. It's just, I think it's just too painful for only a little bit more gain. So we will not betray our values. Now, over here we got Benjamin Katine. Oh, this is the one who's uh, actually leading the Canadian front right now. We can go with Hans, who will give us less supply consumption, more organization, or Louis Segundi. Which is good for motorized max speed, armor max speed, additional breakthrough. Hmm. I think we're going to go with Benjamin. He should be the leader right now since, uh, if anything, Canada is our biggest enemy. And the daily army experience gain will be good since, you know, army experience is really hard to come by during a civil war. All right. You guys got to come up here so we can cut off that tank division. There's no need for us to be pushing so hard. Let's try to get up here. Fredericton. 
Yeah, and, and it is Canada that we are emphasizing attacking right now. Uh, whoa, 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 I almost said I have no interest here. The Second International Congress, our British comrades have confirmed their readiness to host the Second International Congress in London. It's time for the Goodbye Syndicates to confirm its participation. Of course we are going to attend. It's going to increase my stability, and I should get a political power thing here soon. Uh, the United States, it looks like they're just going to leave their people over in Washington. Which is fine by me for right now. Let's cut up here to Quebec. The rich flee. The bourgeoisie have decided they will flee. The CSA, many have sought refuge within enemy territory and even in Canada. The thieving scum have taken whatever of their stolen wealth they could carry with them as they have escaped the revolution. The revolution will come for them in time. That reminds me. Oops. I need to assign all these people. Get my fighters up. Should have done this earlier. All right, how's all this going? The Canadians are giving me a little bit of resistance, but I do outnumber them, which is basically the best thing that I've got going for me right now. Um, I don't know how far north I'm gonna be able to really push in. Uh-oh, when did this happen? Got a little bit cut off there in Des Moines. Okay. Man, nah, they're not going to leave St. Louis, but that's fine. Uh, the Pacific States and the American Union State, I'm going to be depending on them a little bit to be drawing off attention from the United States. Uh, whoop. Got a couple other things going on here. Let's try to get here to Sherbrooke. Come on. Quebec is the key. Uh, all right. Appointing a leader of the Revolutionary Air Force, I'm thinking air superiority now building a red navy the admirals of the united states have been preventing any of their ships from being liberated by the workers and thus we are deprived of a navy to solve that these admirals that joined the revolution and the countless dock workers are planning on building up a new navy we do have quite a number of ships in new york that we can convert to warships we can either go with destroyers or cruisers what shall we do uh great it's building a navy production costs lowered for three years more or less or cruisers so we shall convert ships to crew. It looks the same. Okay, it looks either way. The building a navy, we're going to get the lower production cost. This is a neat event. This wasn't here before. Uh, we're, well, if, you know, if we get to choose, we'll go with the, the cruisers. Cruisers are just better. All right. So we probably, it probably, the way it works out is that we'd get more, um, we would have gotten more destroyers. But I'm not interested in a navy right now. Aren't I supposed to be trading for rubber dog on it? Wait, no. Okay, we cancel all these. We've got Princely Federation, Sweden. Let's trade with Argentina. Oh, we do need it for that. Alright, we're trading a little more than we need to, but that that's okay. That's okay. I'm I'm not too seriously concerned. All right, looks like they are actually trying to start to um, defend Montreal. How are these guys green? Come on. Peru Bolivian Confederation founded. Oh, they made Canada a little bit tougher. Maybe I'm just getting less lucky this time. All right, basically the Cindy Olympics are going on. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Whoa. No, you made a mistake, and you have to live with it, boys. Let's see if we can get down here to Norfolk. Nice. We're going to be able to pick up Delaware. All right. Once again, we are starting to run into some trouble. You know what? i got to kind of clean things up here. This is, this is a real mess of a front. How are the casualties going? I have taken less than all my combined opponents, so that's good. It's always nice. All right, let's try swinging north with these fellas. Hmm. Still having a bit of trouble here. It's because the front lines are getting all zigzaggy on me. 
All right. Yeah, I need to I need to clean this up. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to delete this. Do that instead. Okay. Already looks much much nicer. All right, how's the infantry equipment? I'm short on it. Uh, that's not good. It's really not good. Bases in low supply. Not sure which bases they're talking about. But that's what Lend Lease is for, right? Okay, and we're out of convoys. We'll just let's just build convoys if for right now. That's what we need to keep the supplies flowing. All right, what's next? Uh, fighters. We've got all this covered. I think civilian factories are what I'm missing more than anything. Yeah, we just we're gonna have to I think just deal with having low supply for a little bit. People's Liberation Army is done. Wow. Can you believe we've only been at war for like a month and a half? Okay. Uh, did, uh, what was I going to do? Centralized Command. That's right. That's right. I did make my choice. The days of militia warfare and undisciplined military action cost us too many lives unnecessarily. Okay. That's good. How are we doing on the support equipment? Not very well. But it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. Hey, hey, hey. All right, more Lin Lease coming in. Yeah, it's because uh, none of my friends are at war, so they can afford to just give me things. Uh-oh, I thought that guy was still attacking, uh, so we can fill in that gap. Oh, my motorized, they got too far ahead. Shoot, shoot, shoot. All right, Hemingway's speech. With the American question settled, or Miss Hemingway, the syndicate delegate to the Congress, Took the stage, he thanked all those who supported the CSA's cause and called on the socialist world to constantly battle the reactionaries. The speech was received with great applause, especially by the French delegation. Yes, we can. Okay, so we're getting a bit more political power. That's good. This is not happening, uh, that attack right there. But we gotta, we just gotta get up to Ottawa. We have so many of these garbage militia. Damn. It's, it's awful. But I think we're going to be able to get here to Quebec because we're keeping these guys pinned down. And we can surround that infantry division and the tank. I don't know how many divisions these guys have overall, but I don't think it's very many. Okay, too bad it ended. Modifying the government. What do we want to do here? Hmm... Trachtenberg or yeah, let's just hold on to the political power for right now so naval invasions here they come it's begun Mexican assistance arrives thanks comrades I don't know what you did okay let's get some of you here 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 and here how's it looking I do have air superiority basically everywhere so that's good uh, it also doesn't look like I have any planes that are not doing anything right now. Everybody's everybody's doing something for the war effort. Everyone does their part. Okay, come down here. If we could just get into Ottawa. I'm not sure if that triggers it, but it's got to hurt him, I figure. So why not take it? Uh, they're starting to build a pretty solid wall here. Oh, right, right. There's a lake there. Okay. Not letting me break through over there. How's it going in the rest of the country? Can shorten up my front there. Midwest mostly. It just got to leave it be. But Amer the United States is getting nicely squeezed. And if them, I, I just don't want to go on the offense right now because I'm in, rather enjoying the American Union state and them hurting each other. Workers of the world unite, get more stability. Awesome. Uh, could we take these guys out? British assistance arrives. Nice, getting some, getting some good stuff there. Can we push here? No, stop then. Not in a good way. Not here either. Oh, German divisions. 
Uh, do I have fleet superiority here? I was thinking maybe I can kind of backdoor into Washington. Boy, that would be cheeky. What do you guys think? Should I try? Hmm. Whoops. Tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some cheeky nonsense right here. A little bit of cheeky natos. Oops. Delete this. You two. Come down here. And yeah, you're, you're actually going to try it. We're actually going to try to see if we can just naval invade Washington. And my motorized people have been cut off once again. But I think it works looks worse than it is. Keep them pinned in. And you come up here. Yeah, it actually it does look worse than it is. They're they're fine. Okay, what's going on in the rest of the world? Midwest, we're actually kind of struggling. No, wait, why are we getting the red bubble? It says we're losing, but our defense is quite high. I don't know. It's being weird. Yeah, I thought they were abandoning this front. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Let's come over here. Can't seem to break through. Let's... Can we, can we do... No, we can't build any uh, anti-tank equipment. Mid-Atlantic invasion. Are we able to hold this off? Mm, we don't have the convoys needed. Appoint a leader of the revolutionary military. The Central Committee has issued a directive to appoint a member to be the chief of staff and guide the whole revolution military to victory against all reactionary capitalists and counter-revolutionary forces. The man that they chose for this position was... Okay, Butler, Special Forces. Reese Road is mechanized. And Oliver Law. I think we are going to do Oliver Law. Though, speaking of Maurice Rose, let's go ahead and promote him. Get him over there. Very good. Now, uh, what is the issue here? Reserve convoys, zero out of two. For trade and supply, we still need to build another hundred or so. Now, I think here we are going to be able to hold these guys long enough for them to run out of energy oh that's right these guys have to keep forgetting this lake is here damn nation we're gonna they don't make it easy do they come right up here so we can once again relieve the motorized divisions All right, at least the United States is still taking plenty of casualties. I've taken 173 total. Actually, oh, no, I'm the one who's taking the most casualties now. So maybe things are not going so well. It's green here, though, at uh, Montpellier. If I could just get to this tile here in the corner of upstate New York, I'd feel much better. Hmm... I think, though, we need to stop the automatic attacks. Clearly, they are not working. And I'm also clearly about to lose these divisions. Where's the rest of them? You see? Oh, man, what the heck? These guys have just been... <sighs> I've had these seven divisions just sitting here. Who knows for how long near Detroit. Okay. We don't have the convoys. Here, check this out. We're going to... Let's just stop all that. Is that enough for us to do the thing? Nope. And now we don't have the intel. Because our navy got wrecked. Can we try to force it out here? 46 divisions coming in. Damn. Nope. Not happening. Not even a little bit. Unless, if we manually move people over here, like so, that might help a little bit. Yeah, but look, look, they've got, they're retreating to Washington anyway. So, we're not going to be able to just naval invade it. Hmm, come on over here, Montpellier. 
giving me a lot of trouble. Their organization looks pretty low, though. I think they're very much a paper tiger here. With a little bit of pressure, I think they are going to fold. Canada, that is. Yeah, I think... I think they'll fold. And, and like I said, I'm just mostly planning on the United States and the American Union state hurting each other. The thing that I think is in my favor is uh, the United States is, is starting to lose all its factories. What well, it has lost all its factories? It doesn't have New England. It's about to lose a ton of divisions. And the American Union state doesn't have very much of a population base. Neither does the Pacific states of America. They're already on extensive conscription to have about a quarter of a million men in reserve. So the idea here, I think, that we need to happen is the United States has to capitulate... And then the American Union state and Pacific states just grind each other down while I continue to hold a wall here in the south and try to take out the Canadians to the north. But this is certainly going to be a trickier civil war than the last Combined Syndicates of America run I did. So I hope you enjoyed it, uh, this episode. I'm uh, Conquering History Games. I will see you in the next one. Subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to click the bell so you're always notified whenever a new episode goes up. See you guys then. Bye.